joined by Roger Sluman, who is the Managing Director of Advanced Blast and Ballistic Systems. Welcome to the show, Roger. Thank you. Uh, apparently, you introduced um, carbon fibre into Formula One racing. That, how, how did that come about? That is correct. Well, I just, I just, um, I saw the opportunity. Uh, I was dealing with carbon fibre in residence. I just saw that as a market that really needed it and uh, just started in the spare room and garage. And that's how it all began. And I'm guessing that's still industry standard now? It's absolutely industry standard, yeah. yeah. And that became a 24 million um, per year of business and got sold f uh, for 48 million. So that was good. Well done, so this isn't it your... It did take uh, 25 years anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to finish? I am indeed, yep, thank Great. you. Eight minutes. Okay, well, hello, and thank you for the opportunity to pitch. Uh, right. You can see from the, the pictures that um, we're all about uh, protecting armoured vehicles and aircraft from crashing using rocket motors. And um, it's all about active, active safety systems, um, and we're absolutely fortunate that at the moment there is no competition uh, which is directly uh, the same so we're in a good position okay this is what happens to a snatch Land Rover uh, when it gets hit by a six kilo mine and it's not a very pretty sight as you can see um, so our system is designed to prevent that and what it does it pushes down on the vehicle uh, with rocket motors uh, to counteract the force of the mine blast underneath the vehicle and here you see uh, the motors are firing up very rapidly in, in two milliseconds after the mine explodes uh, the motors are are firing up and that's the end result the vehicle is essentially untouched and the occupants would all survive the experience which they would not do in a standard snatch Land Rover and the key piece of technology that makes this work is the linear rocket motor uh, which is a square section tube which has got slots the exit slots are cut transversely all the way down one side and that enables you to fire the motor up very quickly and deliver all the impulse very quickly uh, as illustrated in this force time curve graph so uh, this all began in uh, December 2008 uh, um, after I observed a mine blast test in April 2008 it took me six months to work out that if you want to counteract the force of the mine and um, stop the vehicle being blown in the air that you just have to have to push down on it and after 10 years and six million pounds investment that is what we do uh, we are getting traction because now we are working with uh, the US Army and we're working with uh, San in Israel and we also have found quite recently there's a market for light vehicles um, with protection to about six kilos and that's what we're focused on at the moment uh, as i say we're working with major players in the industry um, and the only competitor that we have is a, is a company called tenkati who have a system uh, which is very inferior to ours in all respects, uh, I have to say, but they infringe, that infringes our patents and a big element of our uh, technology and value is the patents and the intellectual, intellectual property that we hold uh, and they are having to come to us to license that technology. Uh, we have this uh, group structure though, it's not a true group structure because the top company ABBS where we're looking for the funding uh, does not own half of all the, uh, all the companies underneath. But the key thing is that was, it was necessary to develop that structure to bring in the expertise uh, and facilities to, to produce the rocket motors in particular and um, the, the great advantage of this structure, it does provide multiple opportunities for exits as well as you go down the structure. This is something that we're looking towards for the future. 
The other major market which is developing very rapidly indeed is the urban air taxi or the multi-rotor drones. Um, th there's huge amounts of money going into this. All the main players like Airbus, uh, Boeing and Bell are involved in it. Even the car manufacturers and all the estimates show that there's um, the numbers get very big in the next five to ten, five to ten years. And this is where the very rapid development of the business will, will come from. Obviously, this is what we're trying to stop, we're trying to stop aircraft crashing. And the key issue is that the, whilst the current ballistic parachutes uh, can stop whole aircraft crashing and killing people, they don't work below 200 feet. And as these eVTOLs are all vertical takeoff and landing, in the vertical takeoff and landing phase, they're very vulnerable to any failure, which within that 200 feet safety gap is going to cause serious accidents and people being killed. And there's currently no, no system to avoid that. Our system incorporates a, a, um, a set of rocket motors in between the aircraft and the parachute. The rocket motors are initiated at a certain height above the ground just before the aircraft lands and slow it down. The key thing is though that you have to put twice the thrust as the weight of the aircraft uh, into the motors in order to deal with the momentum of the aircraft falling and gravity. So on landing you could take off again, which isn't a good idea. So uh, the key thing is, and the very simple way we do it, is to rotate the motors. And this is where the linear rocket motor is very useful. And that's a key part of our technology. Uh, this video may or may not play. That shows some testing we did earlier with the, uh, the rocket motors. The next one refuses, oh no, the next one is playing. And this just shows a uh, 560 kilo mass being dropped and the parachute opening very quickly to stop it hitting the ground too hard. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail here, this is my history, you'll be able to download this and go into the details and this is a team, we have quite a strong team of players who deal with all the different functions as required, including um, two people in the USA who are very senior people in the hierarchy and uh, it's, all, it's all very well structured. We have orders and a pipeline. Um, there's currently about £280,000 worth of orders for Plasan and the US Army, and there's others uh, that will come in due course. Roger, thank you very much for pitching today. Yeah. Matthew, do you have any questions? Wow, that was. That's proper innovation. Quick. Yeah, <laughs> indeed, it is. It's pure physics, that, that's, engineering. That's fantastic. Hard engineering, yeah. Um, so, if we take so like both businesses separately, yes, and then I've kind of got a question that unifies them both, but okay. <laughs> both businesses separately. So, um, one imagines on the first business that's not a particularly price sensitive business. No, saving correct. people's lives. Correct. Um, uh, but I also would have thought that there would be opportunities to kind of create revenue even whilst you know you're going through testing and stuff like that. Indeed. How, what yes. What do the relationships look like with your customers? Yeah, they are paying for the uh, for the R and D. Um, right. the, uh, at the moment, the US Army is paying to buy the kit uh, for them to test. So yes, they are paying for the R and D, and I hope that will will will, will continue. Have you spent an awful lot on R and D already, haven't you? Six million, roughly. Yeah, indeed. Um, and there's probably another four or five to go before you certify the systems. So this is an interim tranche of funding, but we do expect the, the major players to be sufficiently interested to fund a lot of this work themselves because they need it. That's basically the issue. The, these are solutions are, uh, which, which, are, which are the only solutions to the actual problems of keeping a armoured vehicle on the ground or stopping the aircraft from crashing. It's the only way to do it. So it will happen in due, in due course of time, it will happen for sure. And do you think but, it could yeah. have helped something like the Boeing? I know they're still investigating no. what happened. But no, 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 that's a totally different issue. <laughs> Nobody really knows. It's, it's applicable to light aircraft as well as the EVTOLs, but heavy aircraft, no, no, the system would be too heavy. 
And on, on, the, on the first business, uh, on, yeah, on the first business or the first yeah. use case, if you like, you can see that there's the political pressure that means that's kind of an imperative. As, a, as long as the solution Correct. exists, then Correct. governments there is that kind of issue. have to buy it. That is that, that kind of just issue where if it does exist, they really have to think about using it. But just on the sued. second business, yeah. is, will this become a, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is this a, kind of an optional extra? Or no, is this it's, kind of safety it's, vir it's going to be the safety standard because there's no other physical way of doing it. You can't use airbags or all the other options don't work or they won't work sufficiently well. We're dealing directly with the FAA and EASA and they have set the rules for certification that you can have a controlled landing in any circumstances and passengers are not going to be injured, which is just what we were looking for. We're working actually with them to push this. We didn't have to. They actually came to that conclusion themselves, which is an obvious, obvious conclusion. If you're flying these aircraft, vertical takeoff and landing above cities with paying passengers, it's the only rule that you can possibly set. So that's great because it plays into our position where we have the only way of doing it and it's covered by patents. So right, we're in a okay. really strong position. We actually can, we completely command the armoured vehicle side and we're intending to do the same thing with the VTOLs because uh, of the patents that we have applied for. Some are already granted um, but there's more to go. So, And then yeah. they're two very different um, they're two very different applications, but they're also two very different kinds of markets to, to sell into and two very different types of buyers. Not really. They both want certificated products that are very reliable. The safety system, the arming and the initiation is all the same kind of technology. It's very high technology. It's what used on air launch missiles, bombs, torpedoes and stuff like that. So it's very, very safe and, and, and is proven in service. And that's the kind of technology which you have to use. Uh, we've already got it through the armoured vehicle side and just applying it to the EVTOLs. So it's not, yeah. so I would have thought that it was quite a different kind of sales and um, yeah. kind of different sales cycle and everything into public sector versus... Well, the EVTOL, because they are developing very rapidly, they're going to need to start working on it very shortly. Right. Um, you know, so we're in a really good position with the technology, the physics and the equipment already proven effectively. And they're going to have to come to us. Uh, there is no doubt about it. It's only, it is, it, it, it's only a matter of time. So, Roger, you mentioned in your pitch about exit strategies. Um, yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. Uh, well, the issue is that we need to work with major players in the industry. Uh, it's a, we have a small operation in Derby, it's spread around the country. Uh, it, when you're dealing with uh, the US Army and the Airbus or whoever, they're major players and you need to be working with major players as well. Now we've already got an MOU with the leading player in the ballistic recovery systems, the parachutes. Um, we all ha ha already have an MOU with them, and we're working with them to develop the system and they already have the traction in the market, they're global sort of leaders, they invented it. So we already have that and similarly we're working with Plasan, a market leader, and with probably with a, a Tenkati as well on different elements of the armoured vehicle side. So we have already have these things already being set up in the armoured vehicle side and it will come in the VTOL side as well. But we want to supply the technology, especially the rocket motors. Mm. Uh, that's what we do. That's what stops yeah. it being blown up, basically. Yeah, yeah. Incredible yeah. technology. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Everybody said it couldn't be done, I have to say, uh, on the armoured vehicle side. All the military said, you know, you can't do that. But well, we did, so. <laughs> well, good for you. Hopefully, saving some lives anyway, which is very yeah. positive. Yeah.